About a month ago, we talked about the most common mistakes made by newly hired software engineers and my advice to help fix those or prevent those mistakes from ever happening to you. And I mentioned maybe one or two beginner mistakes, not just new software engineer mistakes, but beginner coder mistakes. But many of you aren't at that level yet. You're not getting hired on as a software engineer. You're just starting that journey, starting coding your brand new programmer. So I want to dedicate this video to talking about six mistakes beginner programmers make and how you can go about fixing and preventing those from happening to you. The very first mistake I want to talk about is that new programmers think they have to build everything from scratch. And before I go any further, it's not bad to build your simple applications that you're first learning from scratch, but you can't be scared to use other tools and libraries and frameworks and software because you think that you won't learn everything you need to learn because you're relying on all these different things. Well, let me tell you in the real world, you're not gonna be just sitting there typing your code, type, 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 type. Oh, look, I just built a whole entire application. That's not gonna happen. You're gonna to have to look up on the internet whenever you run into a bug or run into a problem or don't know how to do something. So if you're thinking that you're gonna miss out on learning things by using all of these different softwares and libraries, no. You're gonna miss out on learning how to use all of these different things if you think you have to build everything from scratch. To put it in perspective, I'm a Java developer, so I use this thing called Lombok, so I never have to write getters and setters ever again. I use this thing called Makito, so it just makes unit tests a whole lot easier. And then I also will use Bootstrap for the front end part of that full stack development. So I don't have to do custom HTML and CSS and I could just use Bootstrap along with the HTML and make things look good that way. Because somebody else already put all of that time into creating what is Bootstrap, so I don't have to. I get to use what they already built. And that's something you'll learn is that whether or not you think the software developer community is thick. Sure, there seem to be a lot of gatekeepers, but it is thick. There's so much open source software. There's so much so many free tools that you can use that you get to use as a developer and you need to take advantage of that, which is the perfect segue into mistake number two. And that's not properly learning these tools. These, this is kind of the same tip, but when I'm really talking about this, it's not learning how to use the tools that you use every single day. There are some libraries and frameworks that you will use every single day, but you can think of that as your programming languages and you need to learn all of that stuff, right? But where do you write that code? IDE, text editor, Vim, whatever it may be, you need to learn that. Let's let's use IDE for example. I mean, did you know in an IDE, you can just type the first few letters of whatever you're thinking about. It could be a variable that you declared previously or a class or something that is part of that programming language. Type the first few letters, uh, what is it? Control space, and then it'll auto complete for you or drop down a list of what it thinks that you're trying to spell out. So you don't have to type everything all the time. That is just one single example of all of the things that your text editor or IDE has built in it that you can use to your advantage as a software developer to make your job easier. Not to mention all the potential add-ons that you can add. Other developers have spent a lot of time building different add-ons for different text editors that'll help you code depending on what you're building. So not only do you not have to build everything from scratch, but you also have to make sure the tools that you use you really learn how they work and what they can do for you to make your job easier, more efficient, and better. Mistake number three is not reading documentation. Every single popular, or probably every single, but definitely the popular frameworks and tools and libraries, they and programming languages and stuff, they all have documentation. Think of it as your handbook to that respective thing. I mean, sure, it's fun to watch YouTube videos or follow tutorials and guides online that are just kind of like a derivative, you know, something that'll teach you a new language or teach you how to build an app using Spring Boot. I don't know. But if you need some in-depth answers, read the documentation. You have to think of it this way, that the people who are teaching you were somehow taught by something else. That something else, it could have been another person or a god, whatever it is, you can track that line all the way back to the original documentation and whatever you're learning, if it's not directly from the documentation, is just a derivative of the documentation somewhere down the line. It could sometimes be easier to understand and easier to follow along with or, or better put together for a particular project you're working on, but the documentation, that is the handbook. That is where they are getting their information. So if you need to double down 
on on learning that particular topic, look it up in the documentation and see how the creators of that programming language or, or, or tool actually intended for that to be used and how they worded it for you to learn it. And the documentation, I guess I could, I should have said this before, documentation is basically sometimes they'll have nice images along with a description telling you what that code base is, what it does and how you can use it. And I'm not saying go just read documentation and think you're going to learn everything, but when you run into a problem in something, whether it be framework or, or language, look up look that problem up in the documentation and you'll have a first hand source teaching you what you did wrong or how to do something. It's a very good source. It is the main source for anything you do. So read the documentation. Mistake number four, it is trying to build the next Facebook, the next billion dollar app because you want to make a lot of money. Don't make that giant application your first goal when it comes to coding. You want to build a lot of smaller applications before, just simple terminal applications, whatever it may be, in order to learn all the different aspects that go into something like uh, an iOS app or a big enterprise application, web application, whatever it may be. Because I'm sure a lot of you have that goal in mind. You got into software development maybe because there is something that you really wanted to build, but you have to understand that a, a company like Facebook or anything like that they have been in development for over a decade with thousands or tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, I don't know, people working on this to make it how it is today. For a beginner, and even though it's just a solo developer, the, the scope of this is just too big that not only is it kind of too big to handle, but it also makes me believe that you don't care much about coding, just about the potential billion dollar company. And as I always say, you're not going to be making a lot of money in something that you don't like to do. That's not the right mindset when you're coming in and learning how to code. And don't get me wrong. It's not bad to have the idea of, oh, I want to build this one day. Or I want to build that one day, or even having a big project in mind that you just want to build. But just don't focus on this is something that will help me get rich or help me make money. Just build that thing because you think it'll be fun and you get to learn while doing it. And I stress this because if you're focused on building a business out of this app idea, then you're not able to dedicate yourself to coding. What was that thing I said in my last video? The, the number one way to succeed at computer science, and this goes for coding, software engineering as well, it, it, that's to immerse yourself. Immerse yourself into your craft don't be focused on business and marketing and sales and customer service, maybe a little bit of financial management and coding. Just focus on coding first, and then you can expand into those other areas once you get good at software development. Oh, and since we're talking about focusing on coding, bonus mistake. Don't hop around from one programming language to the next, to the next, to the next. Get good at one and then learn another, not two at a time or learning the basics of each. Just focus on one language for at least a year. HTML and CSS are excluded from this statement. Beginner programmer mistake number five, <laughs> getting stuck in tutorial purgatory. I actually had somebody ask me about this in my last Q&A video and I actually recorded a response to that, but I'm not sure I included it in the video. The question was something like, how do I get out of tutorial purgatory? If you don't know what tutorial purgatory is or tutorial hell, it's when you're proud of yourself because you've built all these different applications by following all these different tutorials, but if you try to build anything else, doesn't matter how simple, you don't know how. All you know how to do is follow the tutorial because it's a step-by-step -step thing and you didn't learn anything along the way. And the number one way to prevent this or fix it, eh, don't do tutorials. Instead, pick a small application and build it. I'll tell you how. Let's say you wanna build tic-tac-toe in the terminal window. Don't search how to code tic-tac-toe. Instead, search how to display characters in a terminal window, Java. Then, what you're able to do is you, you use the answer that you found by looking that up, but instead of displaying what they were displaying, you display what you need to display, which is a tic-tac-toe window, which is really just a bunch of plus signs and minus signs with spaces in between to make a three by three grid and a terminal window. Boom, now you have a tic-tac-toe board. You understand why it's displaying it because you made the code yourself. You gotta, you gotta, someone to help you understand 
how to go about displaying something, but that something was entirely up to you and you had to adjust the code in order to display exactly what you needed to display. And then what's next? Well, what else is there in tic-tac-toe? You have to display X's and O's. We already know how to display things. And then you just look up anything that you need to do next in the same manner that you did previously. And the difference here between what I'm saying in a tutorial is that in a tutorial, you're just copy pasting code. And if not literally, then I mean, you're just looking at the code here and you're typing it in yourself, but you're not actually learning it. You're not actually understanding what it's doing or why it's doing it because you're not doing it. You may have read the explanation, but that's someone telling you how it works instead of you experiencing how it works. But with what I said, you're actually using critical thinking and problem solving to figure out how to use that bit of code, but for you, for what you need to display. Figuring things out for yourself is how you're gonna learn. Now, if you're already in tutorial purgatory, then you can do what I just said, just kind of take a step back and do that, but maybe you like tutorials. Maybe you just kind of like going along with it, but you wanna learn more from that tutorial. Well, what you can do is say you followed a tutorial on how to make tic-tac-toe in the terminal. Like we said, tic-tac-toe is a three by three grid. Well, the best way to break out a tutorial purgatory if you're already in it and you don't wanna do what I said previously is to add a feature to whatever you built in that tutorial. So instead of having a three by three grid, go in and change it to a five by five grid or maybe a 10 by 10 grid. Doing something simple like that will make you understand why the code is doing what it's doing. Mistake number six is too much time between learning sessions. Instead of trying to pack everything in on a single day, oh, I only have one day a weekend that I can actually code because you wanna focus on it for three, four, five hours. The best way to not do this is just space out your time into small but consistent chunks because you may be enticed to just do like, all right, one day a week, I'm gonna focus on coding, but I'm gonna focus on coding for three to four hours that day. And then the next week you're gonna focus on it for another three or four hours and then you're gonna be like, all right, I'm consistent, doing three to four hours once a week, every single week. However, a week is kind of a long time in between trying to learn a new thing. You're gonna be spending like 30, 45 minutes trying to remember what you learned and where you left off from the previous lesson because it's been seven days. Instead of doing one three hour session a week, do three one hour sessions a week and do it basically every other day so that you're not spending 30, 45 minutes trying to remember what you did a whole week ago because it was only two days ago. Now you'll be able to focus more time on learning new things instead of trying to remember old things. And you also notice that by doing this more consistently, you kind of intertwine it with your life and you'll notice you're, you're thinking about coding more often, like on a day-to-day -day basis. Sometimes you'll even dream and code. Sometimes you'll dream in code, you'll wake up, you'll test out that code and you actually have solved the problem of the code. That actually happened to me once. More often than not, you're gonna wake up from dreaming in code and be like, that code made absolutely no sense, but it actually worked for me once. So I'm, I was pretty stoked on that. Either way, it's still pretty good to dream in code. Wait a second, you weren't supposed to see this. I was supposed to be talking to you. And those are six of the many mistakes you're gonna make as a new programmer. I hope you found some value out of this. I hope that some of my tips and advice you can use so you can prevent yourself from making these mistakes or you can rectify these mistakes if you're already making them. If you did like it, take something away from that, please leave a like on this video, not for my own vanity, but because it helps the YouTube algorithm, helps spread my channel and this video to more people across the platform and gets more people interested in computer science and software engineering as a whole. It's good to have a thick community. I appreciate every single one of y'all. If you care to join, subscribe button's right there. If not, that's cool too. If I, if I come up in your recommendations, I'll see you then.